Hey, it's a minute around this day. We are doing Days Out in Norfolk Part 2. So if you haven't seen the first one, I will link it in the description. We visited places like Holcomb. We also visited places like the Markleborough Museum. And if you want to know more, you'll have to check out Part 1 in this series. So today we are looking at Norfolk tourist attractions to visit now that lockdown has lifted. So with the lockdown slowly lifting and nearly being out of it, I decided that we would show you what Norfolk has to offer. So I have lived in Norfolk all my life, currently still live in Norfolk, and I wanted to show you the attractions that you, yes you, can go out and enjoy this summer or springtime, which apparently has happened, although with the rain you wouldn't know. So today we have one, two, three, four, we have six attractions ranging from theme parks to zoos. If you want to see the previous video, we visited towns and we did more transporty type um, attractions. This time we're going for animals and theme parks. So hopefully you're going to enjoy this video. So if you're not from the UK, I'm the Midnight Raven. I've lived in Norfolk all of my life. And we have a beautiful coastline and beautiful attractions that sometimes go a little under the radar if you don't come from Norfolk. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first one is the Camel Park Oasis. So I picked up these from my local supermarket, places like Tesco, Sainsbury's and that sometimes have these in the foyer. I picked these up from Iceland. So this is the Camel and Donkey Park, basically. You can see meerkats, donkeys, llamas, um, and lots of other small animals. They have a play area, a crazy golf. They have a land train and pedal carts, a maze. Sounds amazing. So here is the inside of the leaflet. So you can go on the land train, go on the go-karts, you can cuddle a pet session, you can meet a camel session. Um, so you've got camel rides, donkey rides, llama walks. <laughs> um, fun days are usually held once a month. So they have special family days where you can get um, special admission charges, llama walks donkey rides they have a gift shop you can see all the little animals as well like the meerkats and you've got lemurs um, and this guy down here then they've got the go-kart track um, so you've got lemur meerkats and alpacas ringtail lemurs and llamas you've got the camel safari you've got the ultimate camel experience and you can also book vip experiences and if you want a little Excitement, you can also book your children's party there. They also have a £1 coupon on the back which saves £1 per person. Um, the admission prices and everything you can find on the website. So if you're into camels, llamas and that kind of thing, I don't think it would be a full day out. I think you'd get maybe a couple of hours there. But if you just want something for the littler kids and you just want a small day out, this could be perfect for the littler ones. Okay, so theme parks. Who doesn't love Pleasure Wood Hills? So over the years, it's been hit and miss on Pleasure Wood Hills, the attractions, how it's run, but I believe it is getting better. So new look for 2021 starts here. So here is the theme park. You don't really get a map with the theme park, um, but it does say um, that they have a new experience called the Egg Express, which is a roller coaster. They have a new ride called the Cannonball Express. You have the traditional log flumes, which is, you have the Waterfun Factory, you have Wipeout, you have the chairlift. Then you also have parrots and sea lions. You have the train. Um, you can also buy a season pass. Um, and they have loads and loads of family rides as well as obviously bigger rides. So it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's an all-age park. I would say it's more like towards sort of, I want to say like maybe eight and above. Um, but you get a, you can get a season pass. You can get four pound off per entry with the coupon down below, which I think is brilliant. I'm not sure how much the tickets are. You'll obviously have to check the website, which you can do at pleasurewithhills.com. Booking is highly advisable and essential. They are open most of the year through July and August if you want to go there during the six weeks holiday. And then they are open at weekends in September and October, which is a shame because we're going on holiday in September and we miss it. But yeah, it's a good little park. It's had its troubles, but it is coming back and hopefully 
up from the ashes kind of thing. Next one is Colchester Zoo. So Colchester Zoo, I've been before. It's a wonderfully big park. Um, so your adventure awaits here. So inside you will meet all the animals, tigers, lions, rhinos, giraffes, parrots. They have a beautiful um, water tunnel where you go underneath the animals like you do in an aquarium. So you go above the sharks and the turtles. Um, they also do a Halloween event, which I don't know if they're doing this year. But beautiful, unusual, rare animals. They have over 200 species. You can hand feed the birds in this little enclosure where you feed them the little nectar, which is a brilliant experience. You have little pots and you hold it and they come up on your hand and they take the nectar out of the little pots. I actually have a picture of that um, that I can load. But, um, plus you can see all the amphibians and the wildlife. They also have a park, which at the minute probably wouldn't be open due to COVID. You can also hand feed the elephants, which I've done. That is an amazing experience. They give you these leaves and you hand feed them. Um, we've also hand fed giraffes as well sometimes, um, but pre-booking is essential. Um, it's a beautiful um, day. It's not technically in Norfolk, it is more towards London. But I wanted to add it because zoos have struggled so much during COVID so much, that something like this needs your donations and needs people to go. So although, yes, it is in Norfolk, I know that, but they need your help. And animals like this will not survive without donations because they don't get funding generally from elsewhere. Next, we have a true favourite, the Pleasure Beach in Yarmouth. I went there as a little girl. I took my kids there as an adult. Um, so the Pleasure Beach has got more and more expensive over the years, mind you. It's not the cheapest place to go. At the minute, you get four-hour time slots due to COVID. Um, at the minute, you have to book your slots. There's 25 rides and attractions. You have things like the traditional dodgems. You've got the log flume. You've got the haunted house. You've got my personal favourite, which isn't on there, which is the Gallopers. Um, you have the Pirate Ship. You have Flying Dumbos. You have, obviously, Formula One much much more um they have a 4d cinema if it's open you've got the monorail so um they are open throughout the year amazingly enough they're not open when we go on holiday in september again we've literally picked the wrong week to go on holiday i swear nothing seems to be open that they're open at the weekends but they're not open when we go on holiday which is a monday to friday so that kind of sucks they also do Fairground Frights, which is in October, and this is their Halloween event, which is pretty cool, running from October over the half term. They also have the Pleasure Beach Garden, which has a golf course, an upside-down house, and they've got the new Jurassic Gardens go-kart kind of um, truck. But yeah, their uh, wristbands, I think they're around £15 now. You'll obviously have to check the website because they might have changed the prices due to having only time slots. Um, but yeah, Pleasure Beach is a oldie but a goodie. Next one, more animals. This is Frigby Wildlife Gardens. So if you're a fan of animals, but not too many animals, if you're not like a big, big park. Um, but they all have also have gardens. So this is more like an all-round age park. Um, so you get animals such as your monkeys. You've got what we got here. Afternoon feeding of the animals in the summer as well. So you get right up close to them. This is at frigbeehall.co.uk. Um, so you can check them out. You also get things like meerkats, which is pretty cool. You've got red pandas. You've got, some, I believe that's a snow leopard. Um, you also have um, gibbons, monkeys, otters, um, you have meerkats, you have water hogs, you have the lime tree outlook, you've got the gardens, you've got the cats, you've got the tiger enclosures, you've got soft play area, you've got tea room, 
Um, you can also watch them being fed at 2.30 in the afternoon. I've seen the, I think it was tigers being fed. It was tigers um, being fed in the afternoon. It is a smaller park, in all honesty, with the park. Then you also have gardens that take you around the entire place as well. So you do have the gardens that also go around as well. So if you're not a big fan of animals as such and you have littler kids, um, they do have walkways like this that go through the place to take you through the gardens. And it's a beautiful place. I've been there myself. I found it so good. It's home to a selection of animals from Asia set in acres of marvellous grounds. It is maybe a little pricey for what they have, and it's not a full day. In all honesty, it's about a three-hour park, maybe four if you have smaller kids and they walk kind of slow. But you can go around more than once. If you see the animals and go around, you can go around a second time. You can walk around the gardens. You can go to the tea hut. They have souvenir shops, so you probably could get three or four hours out of it, but it's not like a full day park in my eye, in my eyes anyway. But if you have little kids and you want to go on the play area, go to the tea room, go around the park twice, go around the gardens, you probably could get a full day out of it. Um, but if you're an adult, I should suggest you could probably get three, three and a half hours, maybe four. Next, we have Petite's Animal Adventure Park. This one I have never been to. It's Norfolk's premier family park, apparently. Even funner, better memories. Okay, so I've never been to this one before. But it is a massive, massive park. Look at that as a park. It is huge. So what do we have? So we have um, Meerkat Kingdom. We have the constructions where you get to drive diggers. You've got the temple, which is kind of like, I'm guessing, an Indiana Jones. You've got the crazy caterpillar. You've got the mad teacups. You've got the bouncing kangaroo ride. And then, aside from all the rides, you have the Jurassic Gulf, the Dino Jeep Safari. And then you have all the animals. So you've got pigs. You've got squirrels, ducks, ferrets. You can become little explorers with the balloon ride. This is a fun park if you have small kids. You have a donut shop, you have a sweet treat shop, you have a gift shop. This is really cool if you have like really small kids. I want to say maybe 10 and under. Beautiful little park, well laid out. Um, and like I said, you can do everything from digging to, to going on the rides, to seeing the animals, to going in the play area. To go into the gift shop, it has so much. It has a rocky roller coaster, um, so you have so much. You've got the play area, and then you've got all the animals um, as well. It's free car parking. You've got the fire station, the coffee and cake shack. I mean, you've got so much at this place, and then. They have special events throughout the year, or they do when COVID's not involved. They have a mate, the Peppa Pig Day, they have a Dino Day, they have a summer holiday day, they have a Halloween pumpkin picking, they have animal petting sessions. This place has so much to offer. Um, again, they run quite a lot of the year as well, which is pretty good. Um, don't forget your half price return ticket. So when you go, they give you a ticket and then if you come back again, you get to go for half price, which I think is a brilliant idea. They're open from 12th of April to the 31st of October, but do go online, book your tickets. And if you book online, you actually get more of a discount. It does say book online for discounted tickets. So do check online. And at the minute, booking online is advisable with COVID. Anyway, um, but yeah, they are open quite a lot of the year, right up until like October where they do the pumpkin picking. Um, but it looks like an amazing attraction. I mean, look at all that. You've got the meerkat, the truck drives, the balloon rides, the caterpillar, and then you have the goats, monkeys, lemurs, and all the animals. So hopefully, if you love tourist attractions as much as me, especially small tourist attractions, zoos, pet eats, park, wildlife farms, do support your local attractions. So we have 
Petite, which looks amazing. Never been, but I think I'm going to have to. Even though I don't have small children, I love the idea of going for the animals. Again, Frigby Wildlife Gardens is not really a full day park, but if you love animals, you love walks and you love tea and cake. Okay, Pleasure Beach, mainly for all years, although I do believe the Pleasure Beach is more directed towards maybe teenage adults now compared to many years ago. But the Gallopers are my favourite ride. Next we have Colchester Zoo, which I've been to, and their Fright Night is amazing. Probably not happening this year, but if you ever get to go to their Fright Night, it's a well-organised event for Halloween. And aside from the Halloween event, obviously you have all the animals all year round, and little zoos like that need your help because they generally do not get funding anywhere else. Next we have Pleasure Wood Hills. Again, I've been before many, many years ago. It's a very good park. It's a hit and miss really on its running but on a good day it runs really well. And then you have the Camel Park Oasis. Again if you're a big fan of camels, lemurs, llamas, you don't want an overly big park. It is kind of smaller than the other park. Like I said this one again is probably just a half day park, maybe two, three hours at most. Um, if you have smaller kids, maybe you can draw a bit more out of it and you also do get coupons. Do check all the websites for all of these because you will probably find that you can get more discounts booking online. Especially with COVID, they are trying to get people out there and back at these attractions to help the animals and to help smaller businesses keep going. So if you haven't seen part one, I will link it down below. We did visit the transport attractions and the kind of town attractions. So if you want to see more of these and I can get some more of these from elsewhere, I will try my best and try and do a third video. If you want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram. I am the Midnight Raven. If you want to follow me anywhere else and you need any more information, comment down below. I will also link part one. And if you want to see more from me, come and join me on the live stream very, very soon. And I will see you all for another video very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.